Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Now out the gun. Stand by this tower battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Linstock's ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! Presenting Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. I can still look back on that period of my life with pride and satisfaction. I had been given three days in which to do as much damage as possible before rendezvousing with the flagship and the Caligula, and in 24 hours I had captured a French brig laden with military supplies, destroyed the heavy batteries at Lancer, and taken seven small craft, and cut out and taken a French ship under the guns of the Port Andres batteries. The coast was in confusion and I was at least a thousand pounds the richer in prize money. But I hope to do much more yet in the remaining time. The question was, how? Uh, you, you, you sent for me, sir? Ah, Brown. Can you swim, Brown? Swim? Why, yes, sir. Good, well, I want a crew for the barge. Everyone a good swimmer and every man a volunteer. Uh, aye, sir. Let all volunteer. Now, Marky Brown, this is for dangerous service. I want true volunteers. None of your press gang. Yes? <laughs> ah, aye, sir. Yeah. Are you going, sir? Yes. It'd be hard to pick them, sir. <laughs> they all want to go. Well, I'll leave it to you. Yes, you a cutlass to each man and uh, a packet of combustibles. Uh, aye, sir. Come, come, come. Come what, sir? Combustibles, flint and steel. A ah. couple of port fires, oily rags, and a bit of slow match. All in an oilskin packet. Uh, and a lanyard to carry them if we swim. Yes, get your crew ready immediately. Uh, aye, sir. Right away, sir. You have a plan in mind, sir? Yes, Mr. Bush. I'm going ashore to burn that coaster over there. Oh, but <laughs> could I take the crew, sir? I'll not allow volunteers to go on a mission if I can't lead them. But if I call for volunteers... You're wasting time, Mr. Bush. I can't accept your offer. I shall take my barge, the long boat and launch, draw too much water. And mark this, Mr. Bush, no rescue parties. If we're lost, we're lost. I'll not have you wasting valuable lives in rescue attempts. Uh, shall I give you that in writing? No need, sir. I understand, but... Uh, right. I... Well, heave the ship to. Stand off and on and wait for us. <laughs> Barge pulled eight oars, and I sat beside Brown while we danced lightly over the blue Mediterranean. I set a course to reach the shore a little ahead of the Brown sail, which was just showing over the strip of coast. We crossed the line of sluggish breakers and darted in towards the golden beach. A moment later, the boat balked, slid over sand, moved a few yards more, and then grounded. Over with him, men. I'll run the boat up the beach. You got everything? Cutlasses, fire packets? Right, steadily up the beach. Don't use too much energy. We may have a long swim. Make for that low bank of shingle at the head of the beach. It's a vineyard on the other side. Look, there's the sail, not a quarter of a mile away beyond the vineyard. It's only an old man, sir, and two women. They're owing or something. Yes, well, ignore them. Go on, man.
was as warm as milk. But the coaster was 150 yards away, and my sword, dangling from my naked waist, hampered me, and already seemed heavy as lead. The men, however, surged strongly ahead, and by the time we neared the coaster, I was a bad last. The men scrambled up into the low waist of the vessel, and then waited to help me aboard. It must have looked a strange sight, naked but armed. Yet in the tenseness of the moment, our nakedness was forgotten. I walked out towards the little group of men and women, trying to recollect my few words of French. Hobson, there's a dinghy overside. Draw it in, and I'll order them into it. Uh, au bateau, uh, entrez dans le bateau. Uh, voilà, c'est monsieur. Entrez dans le bateau. Silence, écoutez-vous. Entrez-vous dans le bateau, s'il vous plaît. Okay, yes, monsieur. Madame, here, I'll do it, sir. Hey, you, open that boat or else I'll knock your pretty shit head off, see? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I thought he'd understand that. <laughs> yes, thank you, Brown. Into the boat with all of them and cast it adrift. Oh. Well, that's them settled, sir. <laughs> Look, they're making for the tow part. Yes, well, never mind then. Set the ship on fire. Take three men below and see what you can do there. Hobson, you and the others get some of those deck planks up. Oh, right? <laughs> Cargo is all in barrels and grain in sacks, sir. Oil and grain, He's huh? in some barrels and ripped the sacks. He's burning like powder, sir. Stand by to abandon ship. All present? Right, over you go. We can go back now. Uh, right, right. woman from the coaster. She slung all our clothes in the lagoon. Oh, oh, not a stitch left. Look, I'll dive in and get your shirt, sir. No, no, there's no time. We must leave our clothes. A few clothes for a ship and a valuable cargo is a good exchange. Would you like the old man's trousers, sir? I'll strip them off and be damned to him. No. <laughs> Come along. Back to the vineyard. Fall in behind me, men. Uh, Why? Yes, it's no good grumbling. We did the job naked and we'll go back naked. Uh, up into the vineyard with you now. Oh. There's a horseman riding across the vineyard towards us, sir. He's got a blue uniform and a cocked hat. What? Just give me a hand. Let me see. It's one of Bonaparte's gendarmes. You darn and at him, man. <laughs> well, I'm dead. He's galloping away, sir. Yes, never mind him, man. Back to the beach. <laughs> as naked as the day they were born. Well, surely the captain isn't coming aboard and taking the salute like that. Mr. Jarrett, when the captain comes aboard, he'll be received as the captain, dressed or undressed. Tell the side boys and the marines that if I see one of them with the suspicion of a smile in his face, I'll have him flogged. Aye, aye, sir. For the purposes of receiving him aboard, Captain Hornblower is in full dress, Mr. Jarrett. Um, yes, Mr. Bush, of course. Uh, I uh, can see that now. <coughs> uh, uh, a successful venture, I hope, sir. Uh, yes, uh, very successful, thank you, Bush. Uh, nothing untoward occurred, I hope, sir. Nothing whatever, Mr. Bush. Please put the ship about. stifling hot already. The easterly breeze seemed not to have cooled at all by its passage of nearly 400 miles across the Mediterranean from Italy. The land slipping by along the larboard beam seemed devoid of all life. Yet along the base of those lofty grey-green hills ran the most important high road in Catalonia, the road connecting Barcelona with France. And as I talked again with Spanish officers who'd come out to my ship at dawn in a fishing boat, I felt that this new day promised to be as productive as the previous two. You're certain, Colonel Villena, that this army of General Pinos will march along this very road? They must, Captain. Ten thousand of them. Pinos and Lecky's division of the Italian army. Uh -huh. It was at Tordera that I lost my own regiment. Yes. Their army cut us to pieces. And I only escaped myself by riding until my horse dropped under me. Uh -huh. But there is more than the loss of my regiment to avenge, sir. The Italians have burned every village in the uplands. 
Every road is lined with gallows, and upon every gallows is a Spanish corpse. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Well, sir, we must see what we can do. Mr. Bush, clear for action, if you please. I'll have the guns loaded and run out, too. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, train your glass there. Where? Is not that a speck far up on the hill, a horseman? I believe it is, and riding towards us. There's a sort of moving smudge behind him. I suspect it to be the advance guard of the army. You can see an occasional sparkle and flash as the sun catches their equipment. I I can edge in quite closely here, if necessary. You can see them quite plainly now. They are cavalry riding with drawn sabers. They fear an ambush, but I do not know where an opposition is likely to come from. We must see if we can provide some, Colonel. What's that long line of white dots beyond the cavalry? It looks like a long caterpillar with white legs all moving together. It is, in a way, Captain. It is the white breeches of a column of infantry. Why, look, sir. They're waving their hats to us. Very friendly, the whole thing. And they don't seem a bit worried. I doubt if they've ever encountered a ship before or been cannonaded from the sea. Their officers are used to opposing armies, but they've no experience of a ship's broadside. They'll probably regard us as a welcome break in a monotonous march. Mr. General, train the guns on the road and only fire when I give you the signal. Ah, sir. Fire as you will, Mr. Gerard. And again. And again. Give it to him, lads. Water, Miss Nye. Deeper water, sir. We can move further in. Ha. Ah. They don't like don't like it. The next colour's boat. Stop at a point there. Mr. Ah, Gerard. Right, sir. The Gerard load with great shot. Aye, aye, sir. See, they have jammed. The columns coming up are preventing the others from getting away. Yes. They are struggling with each other. Yes, it's sheer murder, but I fear it must be done. That'll show them. That'll teach them. Boy, the deep sellers. Stand by to go about. Cease fire. We must run out past that headland and come back again, Mr. Bush. They've done considerable damage, I think. Yes, sir. Just look at the road. It's littered with them. And the hillside's covered with men trying to get away. Their officers will never round them up. Ah, there's a battery of artillery at the end of the next column, sir. Yes, nine-pounder field pieces. Hm. The only stuff against our broadside. But by heaven, they're going to try. Look at this officer galloping down the line. He's ordering the guns into action. Yeah, wear a ship, Mr. Bush. We'll stand in and give them a sporting target. Aye, aye, sir. Nine-pounders. Reserve your fire for the battery, Mr. Gerard. Head in. Now! Damn the smoke! It's blowing right back into our eyes. Can't see a thing. Magnificent! Half the guns are smashed. Their crews are killed and scattered. Not all. That officer's a gallant man. He's trying to get one gun working. He's... Uh, it's too late. Our speed is taking us out of range. He's a second division of infantry, sir. Look at him. Scattering up the hillside even before we get to him. Yes, don't fire at them, Mr. Gerard. Oh, it's as damaging to an army to be scattered and demoralized as to be killed. Though I doubt if our men will understand that. <clears throat> ah, do you see that group of horsemen above the road there? Gold trappings and plumes? The staff of the army, I'll swear. Mr. Gerard, we'll give a little attention to that group up there, if you please. Aye, right, sir. Do the fools think they're out of range or don't they care? Wonderful, sir, wonderful. I hope General Pino himself was amongst them. I hope he was killed. No, no, I hope he was crippled. Hurt, terribly hurt. I hope... Spare us your bloodthirsty comments, Colonel. I have no love for this sort of warfare and take no delight in causing suffering. I do it because I must. I prefer an action where there's danger on both sides. My word, look at this, sir. We're not as safe as all that. It's a musket ball embedded in the rail to half its depth. Their fire is reaching us. Uh, You see, Colonel. (coughs) The Colonel seems to have more urgent business on the other side of the quarterdeck. Frankly, Mr. Bush, I shall be glad when we reach the rear of the column. This slaughter sickens me. Ah, but we're killing the enemy, sir. That's all I care about. Hello. What's this, sir? Baggage trains? Yes. Those carts with four horses to them must be ammunition caissons. Mr. Gerard, we'll have target practice, single guns only. Let them fire broadsides and they'll miss on purpose. Fire rotation. Number one gun. 
Sutherland drifted slowly along the shore. Her guns spoke out one by one, hurling a hatful of grape shot onto the road. It was with sorrow almost amounting to anguish that I watched horses and mules go down before that deadly fire. But I maintained a cold, impassive face throughout. A few of the mules managed to leap the bank out of the road and scramble up the hillside, scattering their loads as they went. And then, as we passed the last of the ammunition train and came to a new line of carts, I observed a man standing up in one of the carts and frantically waving a white handkerchief. Looks as though they want to surrender, sir. Ridiculous. He must know that no surrender could be put into effect. He must take his chance. What's he doing now? He seems to be trying to pick something up from the floor of the cart. He tried to lift it. Oh, good heavens, I see now. Cease fire! Cease fire, Rex! It's a man he's holding up. A bandaged man. Those are the army ambulance vehicles, full of sick and wounded from yesterday's battle with Vilena's regiment. That officer must be a surgeon. Yes, put the ship about, Mr. Bush. We will retrace our course and harass the main body again. Aye, aye, sir. Stand by to go about. Aye, aye sir. Hands to places. Won't be so easy on this deck, sir. We'll have to sail close hauled, and if we make three knots, we'll be doing well. We shall do the best we can, then. Deck there. Field guns training us from the road, sir. They've got three guns into position, sir. Very well. We'll see what we can do. Mr. Gerard, carry on with your target practice. Aye, aye, sir. In a way, Mr. Bush, this is a good thing. Our crew is raw, and there's a vast difference between shooting undisturbed and shooting under return fire. We'll see how they behave. Those fellows are good gunners. That one was close. That was closer, sir. Look at that hole in our topsail. I should think... Some casualties, I think. Yes, use your bow chaser guns on the battery. It may unsteady their gun layers. There's plenty of targets, even if they can't reach the field gun, sir. Look at their soldiers scattering all over the hillside, sir. Yes, their officers are going to have a difficult time reassembling them, and many will desert. I understand that these Italian divisions desert readily. They have no love for Bonaparte's cause. More hits. The main top gallant backstays parted, sir. Send some topmen up and splice that stay. But we'll be in close range presently, sir. <laughs> what the devil's that? Yeah, one of the ship's boys has been hit from the sound of it. Mr. Gerard, I'm going to put the helm down now. Be ready to fire as the guns bear. Ah, sir. Round she comes. Why? Their gunners are running, sir. They're not going to wait for it. Had too much last time, I expect. Let them have it, lad. Clearing. Yes. Oh, well in, Mr. Gerard. There's not a gun left on the road. Your men behaved like veterans. Fire the box, Oh, the water is shoaling rapidly. We must stand out to sea again, Mr. Bush. I think we've done all we can here. By the time we get in again, the remains of the army will have withdrawn. Aye, aye, sir. Starboard your helm. Starboard Hands to blazes. You may secure your guns, Mr. Gerard. Aye, sir. Cease fire. Secure the guns. Five victories in three days. Three cheers for the captain. Gentlemen, gentlemen, to stop that nonsense, Mr. Bush. Mr. Bush, <laughs> kindly refrain from grinning like a fool. <clears throat> Mr. Longley, a British officer does not caper on the deck like a schoolboy. Mm-hmm. The captain all the house, sir. Sir? Yes. Oh, yeah, the gun room steward. You may find that our casualties are nothing to cheer about. Yes? Begging your pardon, sir, but Tom Cribb's been killed. Tom Cribb. I remember no man of that name. Mr. Bush, surely the heavyweight boxing champion of England is named Tom Cribb, isn't he? I believe he is, sir. But that ain't all, sir. There's Mrs. Siddons. What? She's got a splinter in her... Well, sir, to tell the truth, she's got a splinter where she won't be able to sit down, sir. Squill something horrible when I pulled it out, she did, sir. Mrs. Siddons, are you mad, man, or am I? <laughs> uh, Tom Cribb and Mrs. Siddons are uh, two of the pigs belonging to the gun room, miss. Pigs? What are they, our only casualties? Ah, uh, Mr. Walsh, have you any casualties? Not among the men, sir, but I'm afraid that Tom Cribb and Mrs. Siddons... Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I already have a report on the condition of Cribb and Siddons. Um, Mr. Bush, you may issue grog to all hands. 
Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.